Being one of the stars of Love Island has meant that Chris Hughes takes very good care of his body. However, Chris was left shocked when he discovered a problem with one of his testicles and after several years worrying about it, he finally saw a doctor. Well, he was diagnosed with two separate conditions, but after several operations, he's suffered, thankfully, no long-term damage. Well, a recent study claims that 68% of men don't know how to examine the testicles properly. So Chris joins us today to highlight the importance of knowing how to check yourself alongside Dr Chris. Good morning to you Good both. Morning. And thank you for doing this. Pleasure. Um, so, how? talk us through your experience. How, how did this all start for you? So, for me, I was around kind of 14, that kind of age, and I used to have a lot of baths. Like nowadays, I shower a lot, but baths obviously help relax mm -hmm, everything. Mm -hmm. And I'd, um, I just noticed, like, it looked like almost like a like brain-like, but it was a build-up of veins. And mm -hmm. It's called, like, a varicose or so. It's where, eventually, I went and got myself looked at by a doctor who referred me to Cheltenham, and then I had operations then at Bristol Hospital because it got referred on and on. Um, to the people who were right with dealing with it. But I had three operations on the varicose seal, which was on my left testicle. Mm. And that was more due down to, you know, safety with infertility and stuff, because obviously the veins take oxygen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was literally surrounded the whole of the left side. And, and the, the veins were coming from my kidneys, so they kind of coiled it by operating once within a kind of around my hip region, mm. which didn't necessarily work. Keyhole they did initially, which didn't work. And then I had like, um, like I got a big scar, like across like the pubic region mm -hmm. where they've cut in and, kind of coiled the veins off at that area just to, you know, hopefully, you know, just settle them down slowly. Yeah. They, f they fixed that issue. You froze your sperm because yeah. there was a, 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 a I, risk of infertility. I did, yeah. Well, my two brothers are completely infertile. My, mom bro uh, my one brother, they both got children, mm -hmm. thankfully now, and one was a kind of a miracle child, but my one brother, Will, has literally not a sperm in his body. And you think when you do a count, you can have between, you know, anything from five to 10 million, mm. yeah. however many sperm. My count was quite low, but I did get some frozen. Mm -hmm. And I had a hydrocele on the right side where they cut through like the kind of sac and mm -hmm. then turn the hydrocele inside out to release the pressure. Right. So I had four operations on them. And my cousin as well um, had testicular cancer, which was, you know, very bad for him because it became secondary where it went into his stomach and he had um, major stomach cramps. And that was his way of, you know, of him discovering that something was seriously he was wrong with him. We were talking about this earlier on this morning. You were saying yeah. he was doubled up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I doubled up completely. His, his stomach turned into kind of like an upside down U shape where mm -hmm. the cancer had eaten into it. So it's not the kind of the round shape. And that started expect. off as te testicular cancer, test which is very curable. Yeah, is that, yeah, very curable. Well, I think you said it was 97%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, 95 to 97% of cases are, you are curable. Yeah. The and thing is, the thing is, Chris, that. That you, that that's, you're very brave to tell this story, yeah. and, and, and we're so grateful that you're so honest. It'll be incredibly helpful. You were 14 when you discovered that first issue. You were 20 when you got it. Yeah, that, yeah well, that was the issue. I mean, I think people can kind of put things to one side yeah, because course. it's not something that's in the forefront of your mind in terms of, you know, the use of it, especially for me at that age of 14. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was just like a, a part of my body. Mm -hmm. And it, because it doesn't come with a lot of pain, mm -hmm it's easy to neglect. And I think, I think that's, that's one of the issues. The yeah. it is. And it's similar with my cousin there. Well, he had the pain because it, you know, spread secondary into his abdomen, which way he discovered the pain. And he had the, uh, the operation where he had the testicle removed eventually. And two days later, he was in a court hearing because he's a solicitor. So he had to do it. And he was sweating through his suit. And yeah. I know it uh, comes with a lot of struggles. Oh, yeah. Sorry, what, what, why do you think... That, cause I read the stat there before, 68% of men. Why, why do you think they don't know how or they don't check their testicles? I think it's something that you think you should... I think you, everyone thinks they know their body, but there's obviously a right way to check them. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's so easy just to kind of brush over that fact in... You know, it's not... I'll be honest with you, it's not something that you do grab hold of as such in, in terms of, like, everyday life. You kind yeah. of wash yourselves, but you don't necessarily like use your fingertips in the right yeah, way to, to uh, identify. And, and men don't know what's normal, what's abnormal. They don't know what to feel for. Mm. Right. As we've shown well, they're lumpy shown. anyway, aren't they? Yeah, of course they are. Around the back they are. But, you know, we, we'll go through this examination shortly, mm. explaining what to feel for. Why don't you, why don't you do that now? Okay, yeah. 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 Right. Thank, thank you, Chris. So explain what you're doing then, uh, right. Dr Chris. So now, the, basically, you know, you should examine your testicles Ideally, once a month, yeah, OK? And when you do this, have a hot shower or a bath before you examine yourself. Right. The reason being that when the testicles are warm, the scrotum relaxes and the testicles hang down lower, so they're easier to examine. And the first thing to do is to look in the mirror 
and just see, does one side look the same as the other? Now, the left side hangs lower than the right, and that's not abnormal, right? A lot of men say, oh, one's bigger than the other. It's not just mm -hmm. hanging lower than the other. That's right. okay. And in terms of examination, it's very, very simple. You just place your fingers behind the testicle at the back and your thumb at the front. The pads, not the tips. Now, around the back, you'll feel all these squidgy, jiggly bits. That's the epididymis, and that's separate from the testicle. The thumb is examining the testicle. And you start at the top in just a rolling motion, moving down the testicle, then back up, coming across the testicle, sliding your thumb over the smooth surface of the testicle. And what are you, what are you wanting to feel? What are you looking for? Well, we, what you look, you're, you're hoping to find nothing. You're hoping to find a nice, smooth testicle. But if you come across a lump, sort of the size of a pea, which is firm, that's something that has to be you know, seen by your GP, because that's typically how mm. a testicular cancer is detected. And what you've done there, that's as simple as it is. What, ten, 10 seconds? You yeah. know, it's just up and down, up and down. And I'm not pressing too firmly, am I? It's not no, I can't feel a thing. No, it's, yeah. no yeah. there's no yeah. pain, no. It's mm. very, very simple. And, and in fact, Chris has had a lot of surgery to his scrotum as well, which has disturbed the anatomy. But nevertheless, you know, I, I can feel everything yeah. there. Yeah. And uh, basically, just try to do this once a month. Pop, um, pop yourselves back okay. over here. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank so brave. You both uh, both mm. Chris's. Um, you were uh, you are working very closely with the Movember chat. Yeah, Movember, yeah. No, mm. Movember are great. Um, and that's a website, movember.com, where you can just go on there because you don't need to go to a GP to check yourselves no. out. That's the beauty of this and that's the message that we're trying to get across. You can go onto Movember.com and there's plenty of information there and it's so straightforward of how to check yourselves appropriately. And we should say also uh, that the, the greatest risk is, uh, is, is guys between 15 and 45. Yeah. And so, uh, so this is, you know, you, 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 right from the word go, and as if you've just shown there, really, really simple, mm. eminently fixable and curable, yeah. but you mustn't be embarrassed about it. No, no and, that's a, and a lot of men who find something wrong are embarrassed to go to the GP to discuss it, mm. you see. So it, it's a very frustrating area, testicular cancer. And yet, as you say, it's eminently curable, it's a young man's cancer, but it's easily detectable. That tumour is millimetres under the skin. Yeah. Yeah. It's not hiding deep inside yeah. your body. So it's easily detected if you're feeling for it the right way. It's Thank a you. shame that people are so shy in terms of going and getting themselves checked mm. out because like, you've seen everything and so have the doctors and the GPs that deal with it. So yes. they've seen everything. So for them, it's no different. So. Yeah. I never understand, you know, why people are. Uh, well, what you're doing China. today is great. So thank no, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Keep you your eye on the ball. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, and you don't have to check yourself and get someone else to check you. Exactly. <laughs> Leave a nice <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs>